This is the Yab ConvoCast, one-on-one conversations with your other brother's authors, community members, supporters, and friends. What's up, friends, and welcome to the Yab ConvoCast, not Enneagram edition. Although the person I'm speaking with today is pretty knowledgeable in the Enneagram. So maybe we'll dabble. Maybe we'll dabble because I can't help myself. I just have to learn more about the Enneagram. No, we are, we're back to regular old convo casts. And I'm so delighted because today we're talking with an oldie, but a goodie. He goes all the way back to the beginning with me, you guys. And this is a very elite crew now. It, there's not that many who are still with us for one reason or another, who helped me launch this community back in November of 2015. Let me ask my guest. I wonder if he remembers what November 2015 was like. That seems like an eternity ago, but um, I'm so delighted. I'm Tom, by the way, from the Jewel of the Blue Ridge. I'm Tom. And coming to us once again, I don't even know how long it's been. It's our other brother, Marshall. What's up, Marshall? Hey, Tom. How are you, brother? It's been forever and a day. Yeah, things are going well with me. I Probably haven't seen you face to face since the retreat last year. About yeah, this time. it's been about a year now since I last mm-hmm. saw your face. You know, I used to do all these East Coast road trips because I grew up in Pennsylvania. I still have a bunch of family up there. And so I don't even know how many times like driving from the Southeast to Pennsylvania, you know, stopping, stopping in the good old DMV where you dwell and just being able to grab coffee, grab um, what are those things? Those fancy pop tarts. I always forget the term for those. Like, like, um, uh, Ted's tarts. Yes. Uh, what, what's like the term for that? Like a, like a, a not a fancy pop tart. It's there's like a, there's like a bakery appropriate term for it. I forget what it's called. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's effectively a, uh, a bakery made pop tart. It's at Ted's bulletin it's is the name glorious. of the restaurant. If you guys are in the DMV, check out Ted's bulletin. Highly, highly recommended. And check out Marshall too. Also highly recommended. 10 out of 10. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Marshall. I have to ask because let's just get this out of the way. Did you listen to our Enneagram series or in particular, did you listen to the Enneagram episode that correlates with your Enneagram type? I'm curious if you have no, no yes. guilt if you didn't. Okay. You did. Yes, definitely. And what do you identify as? <laughs> Sorry, um, I'm getting this out of the way. <laughs> Enneagram 2. Um, I think it fits me well. I think, let me quote you. I think you said something like, I'm, uh, well, I, I, I can't get your exact words, but you basically said, I'm the most two of any two you've met or something. Not quite the two-iest, the two-iest two. I think that's something. Oh, of okay. that nature. Although to be fair, twos are like the most obvious ones. I feel like, like you just know a two, just kind of like, you know, an eight when you see one, I feel like, you know, a two when you see one, because they're always leaping into action to help whatever the situation is. And I've told stories about that. And so it's, um, yeah, you're just such a helpful, great person. You've been a part of this community from the beginning, even though you've kind of gone missing in action, I would love to hear what have you been up to since, uh, yeah, since we last heard you on the airwaves, since you last wrote a blog, I feel like the people just need to know what's going on with Marshall these days. Well, um, one of the things going on with me, probably the main thing that's distracting me from uh, writing the blog or other things related to, uh, you know, just job is um, I'm working um, probably 10 hours a day, five days a week. Um, I just I have a job with a, a company that's in the pharmaceutical industry and the particular product that I work on manufacturing is just in really high demand right now. And just having to work long hours. Working long hours. Are you taking care of yourself? Because I know twos, twos have trouble with that. Are you, are you sleeping well? Are you eating well? Are you getting exercise? Tell, be honest with me, Marshall. Um, I am sleeping well. Okay. I've learned the hard way. If I don't do that, I just can't function. Mm. Um, so I, pretty much get eight hours of sleep, um, a day. And then, um, uh, as far as eating well, I mean, I'm not doing any different than how I many, did before. how many Ted's bullets and pop tarts do you consume in a week? That's the question. 
<laughs> oh, I only probably go to Ted's Bulletin maybe once a month. Once a month. Okay, that's a good ratio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's healthy actually. That's good for the soul. That's good for the soul to have a, a glorified <laughs> pop tart. Well, I'm glad you're here, Marshall. I'm glad we could squeeze in. I, I texted you frantically yesterday because I had to do a little last minute podcast rescheduling. As as I've grown used to over the years, just got to roll with the roll with the punches. Go where the ebbs and flows. And um, you were so gracious to take some time on short notice to talk today. And you were definitely on my short list anyway to talk to you because I know it's been a while. So I'm glad. I'm glad we got to coordinate this today. Thanks. Thanks. And this is really exciting, Marshall, because we are, this is the first convo cast after our Enneagram series. Most of our convo casts are about a half hour long. During the Enneagram series, there was just too much to talk about. I was like, there's no way. There's no way these episodes are going to be 30 minutes. And so those were about the same length as our Yob casts, about an hour hour 15, you know, somewhere in that range. But now we're going back to regular convo cast one-on-one. If you're new to this show, if you're new to the network, if you're new to this community, we do these one-on-one conversations a couple times a month. Um, we try to keep them, you know, pretty basic, pretty simple. And moving forward, we're going to try to focus on just a single topic. Um, and maybe maybe every once in a while, one or two or three others might pop up along the way. But in general, going to try to keep these convo casts focused, just like the Enneagram series was focused. And Marshall, this is so exciting because with you, our first guest after the Enneagram series, I am debuting a new prop and a new tool for these episodes. Do you know what this is? I'm holding it up in front of you. Well, it's an hourglass. It is an hourglass and I've just flipped it over. This is a 30 minute hourglass, Marshall. So when the sand runs out, so does our time together. (laughs) And I want to find a way, um, I could probably put it on a table or something behind me, but my goal for, you know, this isn't a video podcast, but um, for the sake of my guests, I think it'd be very dramatic to like have the 30 minute hourglass sitting right behind me so that they can see, you know, their time with me f- dripping down and, and escaping them. So that's, that's my goal, um, with, with the hourglass for these, it'll help keep the show on track and it's kind of dramatic, which I always have a flair for. So there we go. <laughs> I, I can't hold it up for y- you the whole time, but I'll, I'll, maybe throughout the conversation, Marshall, I'll just hold it up and show you how much sand is left. Yeah. It's, uh. It definitely will remind me. Okay. It, um, oh, years ago, there was a soap opera called Days of Our Lives. Mm. Um, and the, the uh, intro showed a, an hourglass and showed the sand running out in the hourglass. And it said, like sands in an hourglass, so are the days of our lives. You know, and of course, then as soon as he made the announcement, then it ran out of sand. <laughs> the idea being that we have a certain amount of days and then it's gone. So, you're, so we have to use it. <laughs> it's basically like a Christian message, that soap opera, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that soap opera, <laughs> I never watched. Marshall it. recommends days of our lives. <laughs> no, I Christian don't. Christian <laughs> themes all throughout. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Yeah. Well, Marshall, let's not beat around the bush then. The sand is literally <laughs> falling as we speak. Um. So I made a joke with somebody. I think it was on a Zoom call. Actually, no, it was this because we have monthly prayer meetings now with our prayer team on Yab, a stellar group of men. If you guys are listening, shout out to you. We pray for the community by name throughout the month. And then once a month, we get on a Zoom call and pray as well together collectively for our community by name. And last month, it was fun because you came out of the woodwork. I I joked with the prayer team. I was like, all right, Marshall's made his yearly appearance on Discord. He made a post um, and he had an update. (laughs) He had an update from his life that he wanted to invite us to pray with him for. And you also incorporated a praise in that as well. Um, And so I just joked with the team that, you know, and we prayed for you, Marshall, and we prayed for your, your friends, your situation there. But I thought this would be a fitting opportunity because you made your yearly appearance on our Discord to share (laughs) something from your life that, now, why not take this convo cast and and share it even more, even open it up as much as you'd like? So you want to tell us, yeah, and in, in summary, what was what was that big update that you felt was Discord worthy? Well, um, one of my closest friends, James, um, is getting married, and uh, obviously he's straight, and um, you know I knew that this could happen someday, um, but he's actually getting married October 1st. And so as the date was getting closer, I just started getting an emotional impact there of recognizing that um, obviously the friendship has changed to some degree because of, uh, you know, his fiance and just his time being arranged a little differently, but soon um, it'll be even more, um, you know, 
taken up. And so because of that, you know, I was starting to feel, you know, as I have in the past when I've had a straight friend get married, it, it you know, it can be um, painful, difficult. And I was just starting to feel lonely and I, I was, I understood it and I didn't, you know, hold anything against James, but it was just having a serious emotional impact on me. I was, you know, just feeling the pain of that, of the separation. And um, so I said that on Discord, and then I just asked everyone to pray for me. And um, the praise report that was the next day was literally the next day after I asked everyone to pray, um, three separate people showed up and greatly encouraged me. Um, They just didn't know. I hadn't told them how I was feeling. Um, but you know, one, one guy, uh, basically, uh, asked me to go to breakfast and it happened to be at Ted's bulletin. Um, and then, uh, (laughs) um, he spent a lot of time just letting me know how much of a positive impact I've had on him. And then, um, another guy, um, just went out of his way to talk to me. He, you know, he's one who hugs me often. He, he's just a very close friend in other ways, Stephen. He um, also encouraged me. And then James himself, <laughs> um, on that next day, he basically, uh, you know, invited me to be one of the groomsmen. And I said, uh, oh, yes, yes. And um, he said that I was at the top of his list, <laughs> which that mm. really hit me hard in a good way. It really turned my emotional uh, down state into an emotional up state. <laughs> uh, Cause I recognize that um, there was something there that, you know, is long-term, you know, a genuine love in Christ, a bond that, that is yeah, really you there. Don't, you don't <laughs> ask just anyone to be your groomsman. Right. I was one of the, I mean, he didn't, phrase it as best man. And that I don't believe I am. Uh, I, I could guess who that is. But you're high on his list, which is much better than yes. saying you were low on my list. <laughs> right. No, no, no. <laughs> which is great. Um, he said, you're at the top of the list. That's awesome. So anyway, I, he, he was not just saying that to make me feel good. He was being clear about mm-hmm. what, what the reality was. And that just helped me. <laughs> and all these three things happened immediately the day after I asked everyone to pray and it really did turn my emotional state around and I've been doing well since then emotionally. Um, yeah, I still recognize the change and the, Mm -hmm. you know, the difficulty. I think many guys listening to this who are long-term single can understand what it's like to seemingly lose a friend to marriage, but it does happen. No, I mean, it's, it's such a relevant topic because we, I feel like we, the older we get, we're going to hear this and experience this again and again, you know, our friends finding that woman, finding that special someone. And it almost does. It almost feels like a rejection or a, or a uh, betrayal in like more dramatic terms, but it it breaks the status quo. It breaks whatever the, the flow of the friendship is because inevitably it will change. Like we're in denial if we say that it won't and everything stays exactly the same as it was, you know, there might be elements of the friendship that can certainly remain and grow and get even better, but the reality is somebody is committing their life to another person till death do them part. And that is, that is a change from what it is before. And so um, what's interesting about you, Marshall is because this isn't the, this isn't your first rodeo, right? Like you, you've been, I, I joked on the prayer call too. I made a lot of jokes with you, Marshall, <laughs> but my joke about Marshall was like always the groomsman, never the groom. Cause you've been a groomsman. Like how many times now? Like, um, well, I've been best man in six weddings, and I've been groomsman probably three others besides okay. that. Okay, uh, that's a pretty good this, ratio. This would make ten. I think this would make ten total. Yes. If you had, if we had like stats, like if you had a, a, a athletic card that on the back of your card, you would have all these <laughs> like amazing stats as far as wedding participation. That's pretty mm-hmm. pretty epic. But it speaks to like who you are as a person. I think that so many people value your friendship, value that relationship to. To want you to stand up there with them as they take this new journey, like what a what an honor that must be. What a, it must be sort of hurtful too, I imagine, just like all the emotions, but um, but also an honor too. I'm sure it's a lot to hold, right? Well, yeah, and hurtful isn't the right word yeah. when I'm actually there. 
um, at the wedding itself when when this has happened before. Um, I'm not hurt. I'm just happy, which uh, brings me uh, to a scripture that I uh, often quote in this situation, but it's just one verse here. It's from uh, uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 3, uh, verse 29. Uh, I'm going to read it in the English Standard Version, but almost any version would say pretty much the same thing. Um, the one who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. Uh, it was John the Baptist was talking about Jesus in this case, but um, it's really true that when you are hearing the groom um, basically sharing vows with the bride and showing that kind of deep love where they're committing their life to the bride. <laughs> um, it makes me happy to see the kind of joy that the groom has in the bride. Um, even though I'm not, <laughs> they're getting marriage and I'm getting celibacy. <laughs> I don't think about that. Yes, I think celibacy. About, <laughs> yes. I think about the joy of, you know, just rejoicing with them mm -hmm. over the good, the good things God's given them. Um, that's been really what I experience at the wedding itself, almost always. And I believe that's what will happen this time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure as we're having this conversation that people listening are either thinking of previous friendships where this has occurred, where somebody mm -hmm. got married and maybe they were invited to be in the wedding. Maybe they weren't. Um, I'm curious, like I, if you're, if you're open to being vulnerable, like, would you have been hurt? Would you have been offended if if you weren't on the list? If you weren't asked to be a groomsman, would that have affected you in a negative way? Okay, it would have had a. I mean, the way I describe it is, I would have had a temptation to be angry. Mm. But what I would have done was, I would have said, "Okay, um, I am not the one." that matters in this situation. It is the bride and the groom that matter in this situation. And I want to be a blessing to everybody involved. And I don't think it's right for me to uh, make this about me because it isn't about me. Uh, I would have thought along those lines and, and just called out to God for help to be unselfish. But um, I would say that you know, the pain that I feel is just not so much um, they're getting something and I'm not. It's just that there will be a degree of separation between me and in this case, James. Yeah. Um, that there wouldn't have been otherwise. And, you know, it would have been nice <laughs> not to have that. But um, what's more important is, you know, he's happy <laughs> and I'm happy that he's happy. So. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that question is weird or if people listening get what I'm going for because I've, you know, I just am a naturally jealous person. We have a lot of jealous mm -hmm. boys in our community. And so you don't have to be a four to identify with envy. Like we can certainly be envious of lots of things. Cause I've had times in my life, like I've been a groomsman a couple of times, not nearly as much as you. My my stats are not as prolific as yours, Marshall. But maybe give me a few decades. Maybe I'll maybe I'll catch up to you. <laughs> um but I've been asked to be a groomsman a couple of times and it's been an honor to hear that and to be like included in somebody's inner circle and to be to be able to stand up there like that is such an honor like there's emotions in place every single time i've been emotional i'm an, I'm an emotional wreck at these at these events these weddings but um but then there have also been at least one or two times where i wasn't asked to be a groomsman and that had a little bit of an effect on me too i think similar to you like a temptation to be angry or a temptation to be frustrated or to like feel like is that a personal attack on my on my self-worth as if this is this whole decision revolves or, you know, around me, which it does not. Um, Cause I've had to think about that too. If I ever got married, like who on earth would I choose? Like if, what would the number be? Three people, five people. I know some of these weddings have like seven, nine groomsmen, bridesmaids, like whatever. But I think three to five is more, more of a standard number of, of groomsmen and bridesmaids. And I'm just trying to think like in my life, like all the different combinations of humans in my life, whether it's family, whether it's friends, people inside Yob, outside Yob, church, local, you know, it's like how in the world do you just pick three or five and, you know, and I'm somebody who, you know, 
is very selective, I think, in my relationship. So I can only imagine like for a super extroverted, outgoing person who has more people in their life, like I can only imagine how just like awful that must be to to have to only choose three people or five people out of all the people in your life that you know. So so it kind of has helped me balance things out. And hopefully if anyone's listening, if you felt the sting of like not being chosen, which I'm, I imagine there's got to be a few listening that have felt that sting. Like, I don't know, hopefully we can show grace because because I don't know, I don't know how you make that decision. And, and ultimately realizing that the world doesn't revolve around you, which can be a hard thing to come to grips with. I've had to come to grips with that many times that two people getting married has nothing to do with me and, and whether I'm standing up there with them or watching from watching from the chairs, you know, is uh, irrelevant. But it's, um, I don't know, I'm human too. So I have to just be honest about, you know, sometimes feeling like it's an attack on my self-worth, even though, even though it's not. Well, one thing I do want to talk about related to James in particular is just that he has been a particularly close friend. So, of course, the impact is even greater than it would be for, you know, less of a close friend. Um, We really bonded because both of us basically started a house of guys together um, about six years ago, and um, we ran into a lot of trouble. I mean, we were reaching out to, you know, guys in questionable circumstances. So we had all kinds of people living with us. And um, I remember one incident where one of the guys got violent who was staying with us. And uh, James literally stood between me and him because he didn't want me hurt. Um, It was there was that kind of genuine care and affection there where he um, he was willing to put himself at risk in order to, uh, you know, basically protect me from that. And I was, I mean, those kind of things you never forget. Um, it has an impact on you the rest of your life when somebody is that caring. And um, that's just one example. I could go on and on about things, reasons why we bonded. We did have to work together a lot to deal with all the opposition or trouble of whatever kind. Um, and then, um, you know, it, it, we got to, at one point, um, I won't get into all the personal stuff related to it, but James and I were having an argument. And in my opinion, he was treating me pretty badly. And um, I basically confronted him and just, we we talked pretty um, intensely. And what, what I um, was trying to communicate to him was that he was deliberately hurting me. And, um, and then he explained why he was doing what he was doing. And I could see that even when he was behaving in a way that I was interpreting as, you know, against me, it was out of love. He was trying to show me something and help me to, as he put it, get out of a victim mentality and actually take action. Mm -hmm. But uh, the point is that he was being a genuine friend, even when he was doing hurtful things. Um, and anyway, in the end of that conversation, what happened was I said, so we're still friends. And then he basically hugged me very intensely with a lot of feeling and said, I'll always be your friend. You know, that, that has never changed. And, um, I remember I was so scared when I went into the conversation that I was going to lose him as a friend. This was about three years ago. And, um, when he said that it just, there was an extreme relief and, uh, just a joy that, Oh, this friendship is very real. I literally almost fainted. Um, I was just overcome with emotion and I just started crying (laughs) and, you know, I just recognized, yeah, this is a real friendship. That is a rare friendship. (laughs) And, um, so there was that depth of, commitment there. You know, like I said, I'm feeling this a little more than I often do with a friend that get married, gets married. And it's an interesting, yeah, interesting situation for you because he's like, you guys are going to still live on the same property, right? And so it's not like yes. he's getting married and moving to another city, which for a lot of guys listening, that's a reality. Like they get married and yeah. then there's a, there's a move away or like, it's more than just changing the relationship status on Facebook. It's, it's literally a new, it's a new season. It's a new chapter. And and I know those those situations could be maybe more challenging. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Um, I mean, we bought a farm together. It's about 20 acres. And so there is room to do this. And uh, he basically is, uh, you know, he and 
Maddie, his uh, new wife, now fiance, but in two weeks, wife, um, they are um, moving into a different place on the same property. So yes, and we'll have to work together a lot because we're trying to keep order among many people either working on the farm or living here. And so that requires a lot of coordination. No question, we'll continue to work together. Um, and I love and appreciate Maddie too. She's just a very, uh, <laughs> um, oh, I hope she wouldn't mind. Well, I don't know if it'll ever get back to her. Shout but even out to that, Maddie, listening, <laughs> listening now. She is, she is um, what I would call an Enneagram too. Uh, also, I feel like you only interact with twos and eights in your life. <laughs> <laughs> if they're most of my friends seem to be that's interesting. Fours also, fours also, mm-hmm. eight, two, four. Anyway, you need some, you need some threes in your life, Marshall. Oh, uh, that's true. I don't have many of those. That is very true. Shout out to our threes. Um, we're we're running out of time, Marshall. Let me give you an update yeah. on the hourglass. So. Oh, there's. Well, I started it late because I had to. We had to get the intro out of the way. So subtract like an inch of of sand from what you see. But we are we are dwindling. Marshall, I feel like pre pandemic I had planned to visit your property there because we've heard so much about it. You've mentioned it a few times on podcasts that you've been on. Um, and I think it's just a really interesting setup that even even when people get married, like they can still live there, or that there's opportunities to not. You know that marriage isn't this big separator as as much as it is a separator on some to some degree as I've as we've already talked about, but it doesn't have to be like this world changing event that completely separates people from everyone else in their life previous to that moment. So, um, so I don't know it's really interesting. It's an interesting, uh, unique scenario that you that you find yourself in. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm grateful that uh, I do still get some. Uh interaction there and it, it will be good. It'll be worthwhile. But um, some of the guys that I've been close friends with in the past, I still um, see because they don't live all that far away. So some of the ones I've written about, if you look back at some of my old posts, many, if not most of them uh, are still living close by and I do see them. So mm-hmm. You know, I'm curious because I have to go to the deep end. I have to go to the dark end, you know, the dark swampy end of the pool. Um, Mm -hmm. Are there people that you, you were in their weddings that you just don't hear from anymore that you've drifted away just through the passing of time or, or other situations that have arisen over the years? Yes, but not when I say, when we say drifted away um, there, I would say in none of the cases, is there what I would call any kind of angry separation? It's just sort of, uh, drifting away in some of them. Um, I mean, I don't mean to be dramatic. Um, two of them, I believe two have died, but other than that, gotcha. um, uh, there was, um, you know, just other types of separation. I still remember, Oh, one of the guys, um, I hadn't seen in probably, Oh, 15 years. And he, um, just sent me a message on Facebook and he doesn't live all that far away from me. And we just got together and ate in a restaurant and long story, but yeah, we caught up and he, uh, he thanked me for some things that happened <laughs> mm. Ooh, 40 years ago. Um, wow. And so sometimes even though, you know, there can be a close friendship like that, you're part of the wedding and then you're not. <laughs> and then suddenly they disappear because, you know, in the, in his case, he moved to another state and whatever. Uh, but um, when you do come back together, it can be a great blessing. And it really was in the case of, uh, I'll give his real name, Roy. Um, he really was, um, like I said, we sort of picked up right where we left off. I love, I love friendships like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love friendships where communication is constant and you can stay in touch and build relationships over time. But, but some of those, you know, the older I get and the more I travel around, like there's something that's just so special about being able to pick up where you left off with somebody. And there's no, like, I'm actually about to, um, shout out to our other Yab original Matthew. I'm about to go visit my dear brother, Matthew. There may or may not be a podcast that comes from that so stay tuned listeners but matthew is a great example like i don't talk to matthew every day or every week or necessarily every month 
maybe every month or once every other month or something. But but he's somebody that's so great to like, I can pick up right where I left off with him. And I'm just grateful for friends like that, you know, to, to be able to just pick up the pieces. Like, okay, what was the last update in your life? And now let's backtrack to that and catch up to the present. And um, what's the Lord doing in your life? And um, any new developments, new friendships, new things, passions you're excited about, you know, just to be able to, to do that with people is, is such a blessing over the years. I'm increasingly, increasingly grateful. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. You don't have to be like super entrenched with people, you know, it's good to have those people in your life, but it doesn't have to be every friendship. And I'm grateful for the, for the variety that, that friendship offers. Yeah. I, I've always appreciated Matthew myself. <laughs> he is again, Enneagram eight. <laughs> Mr. Eight. Um, you know what I'm excited about? I'll just talk about weddings and groomsmen and grooms. Like, I think we've had at least one or two guys get married in our community, like since we got founded. It's not been a huge plethora, and I don't expect that number to, you know, be enormous or anything, but but you know, here and there, I expect that, you know, as years turn to decades, you know, if if we're so fortunate to be around for that long as a community. Like, I think how special would it be like if someone in our community or even someone on the podcast or blogging were to get married and and there's like a, a gathering, a gathering of Yab people either standing up as groomsmen or or certainly in the chairs as witnesses. Like, I, I think about that sometimes. I think about how, how special that would be for this community to um, to celebrate marriages together, you know sporadically whenever they occur whenever they may or may not happen but like um i don't know it's just a it's a thought that i've had like how special that would be oh i would love i would love to be at a wedding like that no question it would definitely get some comments from relatives I'm sure. <laughs> i do think i do worry not worry i wonder though i do wonder like oh man what are all those 15 20 30 guys who share something in common they how do they know each other how did they get here how did they know the groom (laughs) what's that about yeah i don't know i don't know how that would go but that's not our problem you know we can't worry about what other people think Mm -hmm. we just gotta come to the weddings as the best dressed no doubt and um the best dancers on the dance floor probably (laughs) all all get all the accolades all the awards well tom not everybody fits that stereotype i think you could um, dance I marshall i think if you really let if you really <laughs> no, let oh loose no. marshall i think you could i think you could you could show up everybody on the dance floor <laughs> well thanks tom but i'm pretty sure i would never be the number one there i believe in you as far as it goes with uh dancing at weddings i only do the minimal that I have to. <laughs> I'm just rhythm is do not the Macarena. My you can point. you can do the hand motions for the Macarena, right? That's probably true. Yeah. But uh, when you get more elaborate than that, I uh, am not fun to watch. I'm uh, whatever you want to call it, cringeworthy. <laughs> <laughs> Marshall is cringeworthy. You've heard it here when right? it comes to dancing. I'm sure. Source. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I admit my dancing is that bad. But. Well, I just know, you know, we have these Yab retreats and those are always incredible celebrations of our community. So I'm just I'm just like broadcasting, like if I can get a snapshot, a dose of that magic that happens at our Yab retreats and translate that to a Yab wedding, that that could be that could just be a beautiful scene. You know, like I, I could see it. Yeah, it it would be good. But I think the main practical thing um that would have to come up would be just the idea of how, I mean, it, it would be a blatant obvious thing that, okay, here are all these people that are all single and 